just a second to say this morning's message that I'm about to preach. I dedicate it to my granddaughter, Antonia. Antonia is in Los Angeles. I haven't seen her in a few years. But we love her with all of our heart. This message, amen, that we're going to be dealing with, we'll be dealing with things with the family. And so when she said tonight, this morning, that your yes was more than for yourself, it's a deep thing. In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer for our children and our grandchildren. I bind spiritual strongholds of witchcraft and drugs, addiction, date rape, and family line and generational curses in Jesus' name. All spiritual attacks, backlashes due to my commitment to Christ, I reverse back on the enemy's head in Jesus' name. Father, the friends and relationships they have, may the Father keep them clear of evil relationships and evil soul ties that will cause them damage in Jesus' name. I command and pull down spirits of incarceration, jail time, criminal, and gang influence. I ask you, Father, to loose them and prevent them from being involved in gangs. If they're in one, Lord God, bring them out safely without repercussion in the name of Jesus. I also, those who are already involved in gangs, Father, bring them out and protect them from being hurt because they came out. Father, I bless my generation with a long godly life in Jesus' name. I take authority over street demons, worldliness, and strongholds operating in our society. I command you to loose our seed, loose our generation. Father, I ask you to break the demons that I am acquainted with, that I once walked in, that I once lived, and set my generation free. In the name of Jesus, you have saved me, plucked me out of the fire. Let me never forget my generation, my seed. In Jesus name I come against spirits of negativity negativity repeating itself in our family line words that have been spoken against the rejected generation I cast them words down to the ground I break the spirit of rejection off of my children and my grandchildren and children's children in the name of Jesus, I pray against strongholds that destroys relationships that will cause them to operate under separation, divorce, or always being the other woman or the other man. Loose them in Jesus' name. Set them free, Father, from demons and talk to their mind that tell them they're worthless. And they are of no use in Jesus' name. Sexual strongholds of perversion in our generation, I pull you down. Spirits of prostitution connected with drug addiction, I pull you down. Sexual slavery and repetitive rape spirits, I pull you down. I pull down in Jesus' name. Demonic powers operating of domestic violence. Hatred towards men. Hatred towards women. 
I break you in Jesus' name. Evil soul ties with people that mean you no good. I break you in Jesus' name. Destructive spirits causing the family not to get along. I break that thing in Jesus' name. Spirits of rejection, abandonment, and the black sheep of the family. I break your power. I break the power of witchcraft in my family line. And oh yes, Lord. If by any means anyone in our generation has connected our seed to spirit marriages, I break their power now. I loose my generation from spirits of Obia, witchcraft, on any level. And I give God the praise that my seed and my generation will not be controlled by racism on any level, but they will obtain and be blessed in God because we are the servants of the Most High and our lives are dedicated to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And every demon that is related to this prayer, come out of them now. In the name of Jesus. Go on the streets, God. Drive those devils out. Break those jokes. In the name of Jesus. Set them up free. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great big hand praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go right into the message because we're going to do some serious surgery today amen we're going to be doing some serious work and what i'm going to be talking about is manifestations of rejection and deep hurt in the bible most people come for deliverance once again without understanding the technology without understanding the intricate meanings as to why people abound last night i dealt with the dissension of a carnal mind, the door that was opened through the life of Cain where demons entered mankind, and thus it went from mama, daddy, parents, children, to nations. Got that? What I'm going to pick up on here is showing you the stronghold of abandonment and rejection and operating in the people in the Bible and if you would have read over it you might have seen it but today you're gonna see it okay now first of all I'm gonna start at Genesis chapter 16 verse 3 the abandoned child and the abused mother because she was the other woman it was both Abraham and Sarah's fault now, I know most of us don't look at it like that because we act as if she really wasn't important. But let me help y'all understand something. The importance of what happened to Ishmael and his mother Hagar was so important that today we face his generation. And I'm not going to say anything derogatory. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to say to you, when you see things in people's lives, instead of just looking at the manifestation, you need to check the cause. Because anybody can talk about acting out, but do you have enough understanding to see what caused it? Proverbs 26, 2 says, the curse causeless shall not come. Now let's look at this life. Do you understand? Hagar was the other woman. And I wish I could be polite over here. Can we talk? Look, I am the 12th son of a family of 15. My mama is saved. My mama's a powerful woman of God. Got that? But like, like some of you, we all didn't have the same daddy. 
but we are all brothers and sisters. Now I was raised, I don't have half anything. We're all whole. Are you understanding me? I'm saying this not to uh, embarrass my mom because my mom is one of my greatest supporters. She prophesied that I would be here 40 years ago or more and here I sit. But if you would look at the life and just compare it to some of your lives too, Hagar was the other woman. And Sarah and Abraham's wife took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. And after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. Now, Abraham and Sarah decided they'd help God. Now, some of the little situations we got in, we wasn't helping Jesus, but we were trying to see if we couldn't help ourselves out a little bit. Look at your neighbor and say, he's going to keep it real. Because you can't get delivered sitting up in here all religious and sedity. Because you ain't fooling me because you're just as bound as I am. You need just as much liberty as I need. So Sarah decides. She gets a word. Abraham and Sarah gets a word from God that I'm going to build a generation. I'm going to bring a seed from you. And they decide to help God out. And, and, and can we talk? And when Sarah suggested to Abraham to go on in to the Egyptian girl, like any good man, he was not resistant. She did not have him kicking, screaming, and clawing the ground as she was pulling him in the tent. <laughs> Abraham and Sarah's decision opened the door to a generational spirit of rejection anger and rebellion that manifested in Ishmael. Next. And he went in unto Hagar and she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived her mistress despised her in her eyes. When she saw that this child was born by this other woman, she hated her. I never will forget, a mother came to me in a conference like this one. And she said, Apostle, I, I, I want you to pray for my son and for his father. I said, okay. I said, what is it, dear? I'd be glad to pray for him. She said, now let me make something plain with you. I was the other woman before I was saved. And she said, I will never forget this. His wife came to the front door of my house. And she said, let me see that baby. And, I, and, and but my child was in my arms. She, she looked at the child. She said, uh-huh. She said, yeah, she's his. She said, but I swear to everything that's in me, that child and that baby's daddy will never be able to have a relationship as long as I live. Her hatred and her hurt. Now let's keep it real. You've been hurt too. But the enemy loves perfect storms. Curses operate real good if the perfect storm can be set for them to set in. So here you had an adulterous affair, which wasn't a blessing, which destroys your soul. And then you had a hurt wife. That wasn't thinking about Jesus right then. And, and, the, and the mother said to me, I gave my life to the Lord a long time ago. My son, she said, this happened when he was a baby. And she said, the power of her anger and her hate was so strong that she fought my son's dad. And she fought their relationship. And said, my son is in jail now, but the boy operates under a spirit of rejection that is incredible. She said, my boy done nothing wrong. But he said, even when his father would try to reach out to him, it was like a force that was in the way, cutting them off. She said, please pray that God loose him from this stronghold. 
Are you understanding me? I know of one young lady, she said when I was breaking spirits of rejection off of her life, she said to me, she said, my daddy died. And before he died, all I wanted to do was to meet the man that they called my father. But his other two daughters fought me so hard that they told me they'll give me a beat down before they ever meet my daddy. And she said, Apostle, there is something in me that just longs to just meet him. She said, I don't hate them. I'm not even mad with them. But do you understand that there are generations that have been affected by decisions that we make? Are you understand? I'm not going to preach an ugly message. I'm just going to tell you, amen, that some of our children and our generation has been affected and they did nothing to earn it. Some of you sitting in here right now, you are the thing standing in the gap for your, for your rejected generation. Y'all hear me? Like I said, y'all going to have some aha moments up in here today. But Abraham said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hands. Now watch this. Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt, dwelt, dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Abraham, as good as said, I'm finished with her. Do what you want to her. And he never once was thinking of her feelings or the feelings of that child. What has honestly happened to our generation is decisions and choices were made without thinking of the final conclusion of a matter. And now, now you got a generation. Now you got a person in your family line that is rejected and is valid. You can say we the Joneses, we the Hopkins, all that. Be proud of your last name. But be true to it too. Are you hearing me? We sitting all up in church. Talking about deliverance. Let's really go there. Can anybody hear what I'm saying to you? Ishmael's mother and Ishmael were forced to be put in a position now. That would have an eternal, a long range generational effect on not only his family, but on the entire world. Next frame, please. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, and by the way, I want to tell you, in these crazy situations we get into, it's amazing that you would think that God ain't got nothing to say to the person that did what they did, that messed up or somebody might think God don't talk to you after what you did when you were young but the angel of the Lord still visits because God is in the redeeming business we want to get folk back but God says what you have thrown away belongs to me and you don't get to make that decision so the angel of the Lord said in the Hagar when she was running when she was fleeing away from the anger and the hate of his wife. The angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and thou shalt bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. This word, the name Ishmael, meant that God will hear. Even in the name of of this child was redemption. And why was it that God heard? Because Ishmael done nothing wrong. Why is it that you and me are standing in a gap for our rejected generation? Because those children did nothing. You can afford to pay, could be, maybe not, I don't know. But we that are real grandparents can't play that game. Come on, sir. We that are saved can't play that game. 
Are y'all hearing me? Oh, I'm hating home. Oh, yes, that, look, come on, somebody, y'all, y'all, you, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, listen, when we're talking about deliverance, before you want to park up and deliver other folk, you better deal with your own mess. I got this in my family and I, and I'm dealing with it. I will not be the one that stands and rejects that child when that child does nothing wrong. I won't be that. You must always remember that God is watching. While we are going through all this drama, God is watching. Look at your neighbor saying, and God is watching. Next frame. It says in Genesis 16, 12, because of the experience that he had, because of the way that he came in the earth, he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. Now let's break this down. Do you know the real translation of that verse? King James Version puts it nice. And he shall be a wild man. But that's not what it translates out to really say. Can we talk and I'm not cussing? And he shall have a wild ass nature. And no man will tame him. No man will ride him. Why? Because he was forced to be birthed into a situation that he didn't ask for. He was being treated in a manner that he didn't deserve. I know we want to, Isaac is this and this and the other. That's all good. You praise your Isaac, but don't forget your Ishmael. Look at your neighbor and say, there's deliverance in our Ishmael's. There's hope in our Ishmael. There's power. Because Ishmael did not ask to be in this. We do things in our adult decisions and look at the children and wonder why they all acted like they did. I'm going to tell you why he acted the way he do. He dwelt in the presence of all his brethren, but not accepted. Can you imagine your daddy during their famous, Abraham? And, your, and the children born, they go like, that's my firstborn. And you sitting there going like, well, what am I, a chopped liver? Yes, father. Some of you sitting in here, you were really the firstborn, but the last honored. And it has affected you. That's why the anointing from this message is going to bring healing to you. The Bible said this, when my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord raised me up. The Bible says the fruit of the womb is the hearts unto the Lord and children are God's reward. Do you know why? Because God was coming against the very spirit of rejection that has touched our lives. What made you, what made, did you ever figure out why God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased? He was validating Jesus. He was giving him heritage. He was giving him pedigree. He was giving him ownership. He was giving him identity. Yes, yes, Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Then was he driven to be tempted of the devil. And the devil said, if you be the son of God. Notice Jesus egged that fool out. <laughs> it had been some of us. Oh, you're son of God. Yeah, you've been arguing for 15 minutes. Yes, I am. Oh, you're son of God. Jesus never even asked. He said, man, should not live by bread alone. But every word. But... And Satan was going like, did you hear what I said to him? My question was, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. You don't even answer the fact if you be the son of God to prove it. You just ignores me. When you know who you are, you can ignore the enemy. But when your soul has been rejected and your soul has been wounded and you're not healed, you start listening to the enemy. You let him define your actions. I wonder what's wrong with these children. 
Do you want the truth or do you want to live the lie y'all are trying to live? Grand Park, you saved? You better stand in the gap for them. Yeah, you raised your children better than that. But they're not where they should be. You need to pray your seed through and also cover the child that came that your seed ain't dealing with. Every neglected child that our sons and our daughters are not dealing with is our responsibility to hold up before God and stand in the gap for them. And that doesn't matter whether you like their mama or not. Your child must have liked her for a few minutes anyway. Right. Y'all want to talk about delivery. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's what you want. You don't, you, don't, you, don't want to, you don't want to deal with the core of the matter. You don't want to have science deliverance teaching. What makes me a general is I make troops address the place that needs the prime objective. You want to deliver everybody else and have sympathy for everybody else in our churchy little manner and forget your own seed. Talk about them. Backbite them. Shake your head at them. But when it comes to mine, I'm holding them up. Praise God. I believe in God for the breakthrough. Well, when you're going to address the one that's yours that all of y'all are rejecting. That did nothing wrong. Ishmael's problem was he was born. Some of our grandchildren did nothing wrong. And they're wondering what is wrong with me. So they have to find acceptance someplace else. Because even we church folk don't get it. He dwelt in the presence of his brethren, but was not accepted. Everybody else was, but not him. Having a party for everybody else, but not him. Nobody missed him. There ain't nothing worse than to be in a family lineage and they never have a party and nobody misses you. Not respected at all. He was feared and treated as an outcast. He was filled with anger and violence. He was mad. Let me tell you something. When someone known get these big three, love, forgiveness, and acceptance, you get mad. Have you ever tried as an adult to get, get your mate's attention and they just don't get it? And then one day you just slam a pot down, bang! And you go like, what's that all about? Well, it's about a month of putting up with you, not hearing my voice. Or you get a steak a little cooked, a little hotter, a little blacker than what it's supposed to be. Let me tell you something. You can say whatever you want to and try to hide it, baby girl. If you are not being loved, forgiven, and accepted, if you're not being acknowledged, if your voice cannot be heard, you will get angry and do something to make yourself be seen and heard. Whether it's appropriate or not. That's why the spread of rejection has some of us out there on those streets doing God knows what. Come on, some of y'all are street rejects. You're in now. Don't forget where you were. You can, when matter of fact, when you go to certain corners, you can still smell where you used to stand. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Look, I was a drug dealer and a wannabe hustler, okay? Y'all were not the first crew that I talked to. I like to make people laugh. I'm from the country. I'm a country boy. I was a country dope addict, drug dealer, and hustler. And that thing was a part of the rejection that operated in my life. The power to lead was of this anointing of my destiny. But my rejection used it to operate in the streets. Why was he acting the way he was? Was because the way he and his mother were treated. Do you really think that Ishmael was going to watch the way his mother Hagar was being treated? Listen, I, I, I got to go there. I, I'm going to venture to move in. Don't even email me about it because I'm not going to respond. 
I remember looking at Shaga Zulu. Shaga. And I remember at one period in that movie, Shaga's daddy treated his mama like a dog. And they made that woman have to run and hide and go through all kinds of stuff. And Shaga was small. But later on, Shaga got teeth. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Our grandchildren are getting teeth. And they need to have known a long time ago that we cared about them. See, some of us sitting in here that have gone through the spirits of rejection and all of that, you know the power of that God has done to your life. You say, but you still fighting God. I don't want to hate my daddy. You know what I'm talking about. God, I don't, I don't want to hate that Jones side of the family. Baby girl, I was praying for one young lady one time. And like I said, you know, when I'm jumping in deliverance, I get them some real stuff. And I'm praying for her. I said, all right, then let's, let's see what we're going on. All of a sudden, I get a word of knowledge. Like last night, y'all saw me operate. I get a word of knowledge. I said, what? She said, she looked at me and tears was in her eyes. I said, sis, I'm going to whisper this in your ear because I don't get loud and ignorant. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command the side of your family to hate you because you're really light-skinned, a red bone. Go. And she immediately manifested. When her deliverance was over and it was strong, she said, in my family, because I was light-skinned, but my daddy's side of the family would not accept me. Because she was the wrong color. Are you understanding me? Yeah, yes. Some of y'all got that aha moment, but it's okay. Somebody said, thank God for healing. Thank God for healing. He was a black sheep in the family. A rejected and abandoned generation. What we are seeing today in our families is the manifestation of a rejected and abandoned generation. Yes, we spent so much time trying to fight their mama for our son or fight their daddy for our daughters that we forgot in the middle was our generation. Somebody say, oh glory. oh, glory. Black sheep defined is someone who does not fit in with the rest of the group and is often considered to be a troublemaker or an embarrassment. God damn. Black sheep term describes someone who feels left out in a family. Basically, the outcast of the family because they choose to do other things then live up to their parents' or family standards. You don't seem to fit in anywhere when that spirit is on you. It takes you a while to figure out what's going on. In the beginning, you begin to say, like, you know what? No matter where I go, it seems like I just can't, just can't seem to fit in. It's because if in your upbringing that spirit has gained access it will manifest itself everywhere you go. When truth be told, it's not where you're going, it's what you're toting when you get there. And I lost three people. What am I saying? Glad you asked. I'm saying we need to be healed. A healed whole person is whole no matter where they go. Being the 12th son of the family of many different fathers and what have you. The healing and wholeness in time through the deliverance I have gone through makes me comfortable no matter where I am. I don't need your environment to make me comfortable. I'm comfortable wherever I go. Do, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Look at your neighbor and say, but that is healing. When you feel like you're the black sheep of the family, you feel like you are an embarrassment. And then you start doing what humans do by nature. Comparing yourself with other folk. And you know the only amazing thing about comparing yourself with other folk? At the end of the day, we all know better than each other. Your greatest hero, if you spend enough time with them, you will find something in them that just said, oh God, you need deliverance. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't seem to live up to others' expectation. How do I get in? Listen, the spirit of abandonment is why some people, I'm going to say it the way we all say it, don't feel saved. They've never felt in all their life. And getting Jesus in a Bible verse doesn't change the fact that you still need healing from that rejection in you that makes you feel like you can't fit. You'll start doing stuff. You'll start doing things to be accepted. Is, is anybody getting this? Next frame. Are you getting this? Somebody say glory. Glory. Now let's look at another family. Let's shift on down the road. See, I told you it's right in the Bible. This stuff is right in the Bible. What we are going through in our families is right in the Bible. When I was in seminary, man of God, Pastor, when I was in seminary, one of the things they said in one class I was setting in, they said one thing remains faithful, and that is that human nature has not changed since God created us. And I thought to myself, I said, wow. And now as a, one that is a researcher and a studier, I look at the lives of people because I love people. And you can see whether it's 2000 BC or whether it's right now, human nature ain't changed. If you treat somebody the way Ishmael was, treat, was treated, you're going to get somebody that nobody can ride. Rejection is rejection no matter what period of time it's in. Now next here goes another twisted situation in the family. Now the first one we dealt with was somebody born in your family that y'all ain't owning. Some grandchild in your family that you know your child is neglecting and they need your prayer. Now you would think on one hand, Sharice, that I'm putting it on you. You know, he my fault. It's your seed. I'm asking you, all I'm asking you to do is bombard the heavens at least. All I'm telling you to do, because in some cases, there ain't a thing you can do but go before God. Because your hands are naturally tied. This is not a guilt trip message. This is a message to acknowledge that we need to go to war. That's all I'm saying. We need to go to war and we need to be the last ones that give up on them. Sometimes it's not what they're doing. It's why they're doing. Is everybody okay? The family of Jacob and Rebecca had serious problems. They set the family up for the enemy to destroy the children. Look what it says here. Genesis 25, 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat his venison. And Rebekah loved Jacob. So it's obvious. Esau was loved by his father because of his ability. Not because of who he was. His father loved his venison. I tell you, I love you so much. He really eats something else. He's telling you, make nothing but AIDS. He's not proud of him. That's my boy. But if he wasn't making that, would he still be my boy? Right. At first, at first the childish mind can take that as being enough to live off of. But as the mind matures and as truth begins to hit, they begin to realize in their spirit, as many of us have today, that all of my achievements, that was the only reason why that I was loved. I had the opportunity, and I'm going to share with y'all, I both prophesied Miss Delaware a national teenager before she ever won. But I also had the opportunity to deliver her from a demon called perfection. That thing was so buried and so disguised that you would have patted it on the head and gave it a prize. Because her achievement was high. Her grades excellent. Whatever she did was done to receive approval. And it was killing her on the inside. 
during her deliverance when I prayed for her and began to pray for her healing she said all I know is if I fail if I don't have all of this the A's the excellence the ability the stuff my parents can praise before other parents that they got in me I don't have anything and we had to deliver her from a spirit a demon of driving fearful perfection wow. now that thing most of us would have glad to get it employed with us because that thing could work <laughs> are you understanding me what I'm saying to you but it was destroying her on the inside there's some of you in here what have you you, you, you are blessed you, you, you've, you've achieved some wonderful things but those achievements haven't been very good for you have they because they've been driven by fearful feeling that my acceptance is based upon my venison. Wow. Rebecca loved Jacob obviously more than she did Esau. Period. And in time, Esau knew it. Is y'all getting this? Somebody say human nature. Has not changed much. Now, at this juncture, Something going to come up out of this. Next frame. Jacob used his brother for what he could get out of him. Now mind you, his daddy loved what he had. His brother now is going to take even that. Genesis 25, 31, 32. Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point of die. And what profit shall a birthright do to me? And he took that from him. Next, his mother taught Jacob later to deceive his dad. Manifesting a lying spirit, disrespectful authority, and a generational curse of reaping what you sow in the family. And God was watching. Is anybody getting this? Genesis 27, 5, and Rebekah heard what Isaac spake to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for the venison and bring it back, to bring the venison back, and she took all the value Esau had to offer in the family. She told his brother, you dress up the way I'm saying, you listen to me, boy. I'm going to fix this food the way I taught your brother to cook it. And I want you to take it to your father. Even Jacob said, man, he might figure me out, man. And mama said, you hear what I said? As a matter of fact, you do what I say and let him talk to me about it. Are oh, you hearing me? Now, I hope that picture haven't played in any of our lives, sister. Brother, don't get mad with me. Y'all still love me? You loved me last night? You love me today? Somebody say, in the family. We're talking family business. We're talking family situations. Human nature repeats itself. Next frame. Is it about getting this? Now this is in the Bible. It's right there. But you were so busy trying to get to when Jesus returns that you forgot how to live between then and there. And Rebecca spake unto Jacob her son saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat it and bless thee before the Lord, before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. So she taught Jacob, one, how to deceive his own father. Two, she created sibling rivalry in the family. Three, she set up, uh, up years of division in the family. Next, also validated deception and lying as well. Sound just like the family. I delivered right from LA a young lady that had a spirit of prostitution on her. Do you know where she got it from? Her mom taught her how to get the rent paid at 16 years old. And it made her a strawberry on the street. And it set her life up for drugs. It set her life up for destruction in relationship with men. Why? Because she was taught by her mama. And it became a generational curse. 
Today she's saved in a preacher's life and on fire for God. Is anybody getting this? Are, are you seeing it? These teachings are coupled. The way I do deliverance with people is from actually knowing that life in scripture and life in human nature has to be met. You've got to deal with it. You can't bury it. Do you know one of the greatest tricks the devil's played with the church is we come in here and if we testify, we'll testify about everything clean and leaving dirty, dirty stuff still around. Come on. Dirty laundry still there. Listen, just because you can put your dirty laundry in a, in, a, in, a, in a closet don't mean it still don't stink. <laughs> i never forget. I, I'm going to share this before I go to the next break. Can we talk? i never forget what it, what, what, uh, prophetess that was visiting me. She visiting our church. And she was sharing how that, uh, that she went on a, uh, she, was, she was going through some changes. She really went on a flesh break. But she figured that she was better than this. And this. So she goes in this bar and she gets this guy buying all them drinks. And she just works him. I mean, she just works it. And this prostitute leaned up beside her. He said, and she looked at her like, what's this? And the prostitute turned around and said to her, he said, you know, girlfriend, you're acting like you're more than me, but you're doing much of the same thing only on a cheaper price. And she said it was like God slapped her right in her face because she realized she realized what was operating in her sometimes the battle that we have with church is unfinished business in yourself you, you swear it's bishop and first lady because you married with mom and dad I had to tell one, one, one person one, a person one time I had to tell them I'm not your daddy I am a mentor and a leader of the gospel but I'm not your dad and you will not reduce me down to your emotional bondage. What we're going to do with your emotional wound is get you healed. Yeah. It's getting hot in here. Fire! Next frame. <laughs> But what Jacob's mother taught him, he reaped back from his uncle Laban what he did to his brother. This, stuff we, this is why we got to deal with generational stuff, man. Matter of fact, uncle Laban and his mom were already manifesting a generational thing of deceit. And she sends her son right to someone that is just as good as she is at using people. How many know sometimes you got family just, 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 you just stretches? <laughs> I, was, I had a blessing a few weeks ago to deliver a, a, a young man that had flew from across America for deliverance. And, and he was saying to me, I'm having strong warfare with lust. And he said, he said it, it, it has damaged me. He said, even as a preacher, this thing has damaged me. And then he began to tell me his history. And, and when he was telling me his history, I saw how that lust spirit was a law of reaping in sword or reciprocity. He said, in the country I came from, I'm trying to be nice, okay? In the country I came from, we, uh, my family had prostitution from six years up. And, and, and you hear me? Kids out there on the street. And he said, I was raped and molested by my grandmother at 13 years old. And God gave him some strong deliverance. And at the end of the deliverance, and I was counseling him, I said, I want you to understand how this bondage got in you. I said, when you were sharing with me in the analytical part of my mind, the wisdom part of my mind, here's what you're saying and helps you put it together. Some people try to get deliverance without understanding what has happened to them. And I said to him these words. I said, what opened the gateway of lust in your life was your grandfather and father's prostitution ring with other people's children. I said, they were putting them on the block at a young age. 
and that demon in your grandmother, which was the same demon in your father, that demon attacked you. So what was sown on the street came back around like a boomerang and hit our family. Get with me. Some of the stuff that we are seeing is our stuff. No, no, no. Mm -mm, you didn't get this. You didn't get it. You didn't get this, did it? Some of the stuff you're seeing in your generation. You want to start with that grandchild? You might want to start with the lineage long before then. Because this thing ain't young. This dog, this dog been barking for a long time in our family line. So go back to the source. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to break that same demon I used to operate in. My daddy used to operate in. My mama used to operate in. Our family operated in. Come on, man. This is the power of intercession. This is the power of it all. It didn't just happen. You didn't just all of a sudden get crazy. Do you understand? Oh, thank you, Father. People, listen. Everybody got what we call secret strongholds. Some of the stuff we were doing, we weren't even taught. We just operated in. You hear me? Now, you name it, I ain't. But if you can name stuff that you've been operating in for, since you've been knowing, and you try to say, well, who taught me that? I don't know, but I just operated in it. You are looking at a family line generational curse that have been activated. Ask the father to break it and break the Senate road on and break the law of reaping and sowing. The law of reaping and sowing can be broken because Christ took that on the cross as well. <sighs> he, he, he reaped it back from his uncle Laban what he did to his brother. The name Jacob means deceiver, subplanter, to take the place of another as through force, scheming, or strat strategy. God had to change his name. And guess what God had to do to redeem us? Change your name. Change you from hustler to royal priesthood. <laughs> change you from twisted to redeemed. How many of y'all got a new name? Somebody said, thank God I got a new name. To break the power of our earthly last name, last nature, generational curse. God changed it. Is anybody getting this? Look what it says in Genesis 31, 7. And your father, he's talking about Laban. He's telling his wife, and your fathers have deceived me and changed my wages ten times. So he received Ten times what he did to Esau. Never saw that, did you? He deceived Esau twice. And ten times his uncle changed his wages. Listen at this. But God suffered him not to hurt him. God suffered him not to hurt me. There's some stuff that has gone on in our family line. Somebody said, but thank God. He suffered us not to be hurt. As bad as we could get hurt. People, no one, listen to me. People, no one gets away with anything. What we do has a cause and an effect. Next frame. Everybody all right? By the time that, here we go. Didn't I tell you that what was going on in that family with Esau, when he got grown, it was going to show up? Look at your neighbor and say, it's showing up now. Say, uh -oh. uh oh It's showing up. By the time Esau was grown, he didn't care much for his parents' opinion or input in his life, like some of us. And there was silence in the house. <laughs> Thus signifying. <laughs> and 
when he got married, he never conferred with them about that marriage whatsoever. Neither did he care what they felt about it. Look what it says here. Genesis 26, 34. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judah, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashemath, the daughter of Elon, which were, were what was they? Well, how did they feel about them girls? Which were a grief of mine under Isaac and Rebekah. Who oh, know why that boy married them girls? I don't know how he dad would put somebody like her in our family. <laughs> Are you seeing it? Or does it sound like your stuff? Get what I'm saying? Yes. But he, that son, never conferred with them. Because they had made it quite clear in his growing up that all you saw in me was what I could do. And when that was taken, and my mother helped take it, and my brother helped steal it. So I, you think I'm going to depend on your opinion? You lost my ear. Are you hearing me? With Esau's life, what happened was his parents' opinion meant nothing to him. Because the way he was treated. They lost him because of how they treated him. He made a life outside of the family because of the way that he was treated. Do that sound like us? Yeah. Are you understanding me? And that's what we are going for, to pray for, not only ourselves, but our generation. Some of us listening at me in here, you would, you would not be surprised at the healing some of you need. And God is a healer. But in this, did y'all ever see this in the Bible? It was right there all along. I'm going to tell you why we, didn't, we missed it sometimes. Because you read it in the concept of a story, not in the concept of a person's life. These were not Bible stories. These were families. These were life. Moving on next. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I got time. Good. Next frame. The wounds of Leah were manifested in the names of her children. Now, Leah was a, was a wife. No matter what she did, couldn't please that man. Now, I know that doesn't sound like nobody. No, nobody in California has had that problem. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Let's look at it in the Bible. Somebody said, put meat, put meat. on their bones, please. Oh These aren't Bible stories. These are people just like us. Yes. Genesis 29, 32. Leah conceived and bare a son. Now, now, let me tell you the life Leah lived. Leah knew that her husband never really wanted her, but he settled. Hmm? Can we talk? That's the reason why some of us need to get delivered from being mad at who we don't have that didn't want us. I, I have seen, I have seen two women, not ha neither of them have the man, and still mad with each other years later. I'm sorry, but my mind is going like, why you care? What in your soul makes you think that you want to put your sanctified mind, put your mental strength into somebody that don't even want you? And then here you go, you got somebody yourself now. Y'all did hear that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just tried to make my first visit real. what it says. Genesis 29, 32. Leah conceived and bare a son and she called his name Reuben. She said, surely the Lord have looked upon my affliction. She felt blessed. God done saw what I was going through. My sister couldn't have a baby, but I had one for him. The other woman couldn't have one for him. Now I tell you, I had a child for him, but neither one of you had him. Surely the Lord have looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. She had a child trying to get his love. 
Leah was so full of rejection that she thought that by giving Jacob a baby, he would give her some attention. The name Reuben means, see, a son. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. It didn't work. Some of us have people in our lives that we've given birth for them. And you did it out of love and dignity, not just sin. You didn't give yourself over to them because you are pervert. You actually cared, but you still couldn't get their attention. See, a son. This man never even thought about the kid. When we do this stuff, we don't think it through. That's the reason why we need so much healing. Now the stuff I'm talking about, we've been there. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Can I tell you my story? When I was in Maryland at 15 years old, remember I was raised up, I was a 12th child. I spent from two years up to 15, I was raised by my auntie and uncle. And when I moved to Maryland, now mind you during this time, I never knew nothing about sleeping with anything. So when I moved to Maryland at 15 years old, some years later, at the beginning of my marriage, I get a call and they said there is a 16 year old kid that says that I am her father. Now what the deal was, was in Maryland, I know they don't do that here. When you can't find the name for a father to get that welfare check, you use the next name that you can get that can't be gotten or got up with. So I me and my wife get in a car and we go to Maryland and I said, well, I, I know who this person is and I've never touched him. So I go to the agency and I said, I understand you're looking for me. Now I was a young minister then. I said, I understand you're looking for me. The people in the agency said, oh no. Said, uh, we, know what's, we know what's going on. You're not that child's, child's father. We know who the father is. We just know she lied and used your name. I said, so you don't need me for nothing. They said, no. I said, okay, good, done. When I went to preach at my home church, one of my friends came up to me and said, Ivory, there's a, there's a little girl over here. She wants to talk to you. And when she walked up to me, she said, are you my daddy? And I looked at that beautiful little girl. I said, I wish that I was your father. She said, my mom tells me one minute my dad is this one, another minute this, that. I said, sweetheart, I wish that I could give you the identity. I said, you are so so gorgeous but the sad thing is I wasn't her dad I couldn't take that on but do you see the damage that we do when we make the decisions we do some of you that are listening at me on YouTube or all over the world as y'all do some of you are victims of choices that were made bad choices that left you with no identity you're trying to find out who you are. And I'm going to tell you something. In some cases, to find out who you are, you better find it in Christ. Because sometimes mama and man and daddy ain't going to be able to help you. I pray God heal you. I pray God breaks that abandonment and that rejection that is in you. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? God, I praise you. She said, his name shall be Reuben. See a son. Next frame. Leah conceived another son trying to get Jacob's love and attention. And his name was Simeon. And the name Simeon means that is hearing. She was crying out for her husband to hear her. She was going, Simeon, see a son. Now, if you will put it together, it goes like this. Reuben, can't you see me? Simeon, I just want you to hear me. And she conceived and bare another son and said, now this time will my husband be joined with me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, the name of the other was called Levi and his name meant that is joined. And she said, now my husband will be joined to me. Let's back up and go over it. So what he has is, number one, she has, see, Reuben, a son, Levi, I want you to hear me. I, I mean, uh, uh, Simeon, I want you to hear me. Levi, 
Meaning, can't you be joined to me? Are oh, you understanding me? How do y'all think that woman felt? How do you think the pain, how do you think her healing would be? And we today getting the knowledge of counseling and healing. And I, I say it, I mean the way I'm saying Because I know the deliverance session is supposed to be all the demons. It's not all demons. It's us and it's our emotions. The demons are a byproduct of open gates that have been damaged to our emotions. And to get our healing, it's not just casting out spirits. But it's getting healed until our emotions is healed. Until my, God healed my emotion. Heal me so I'll miss not knowing who my father is. But it will not control my life anymore. I'll wish that you would treat me different. But I have learned to live whether you do it or not. God heal me. This is, this, this is what I'm talking about. When you're ministering to people, it's not just casting out the spirits of rejection. It's identifying what the root of it is. Identifying how to live past it. I know this is tough. Like I said, most people would rather have a prayer line than facts and truth. Next thing. Go ahead and give God a baby hand praise if you want to hear But watch this. Leah soon realized that no matter how many babies she had, Jacob was not going to honor her like a husband should. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now I will praise. Wait a minute. She done gone to see her son, hear me, join me to... I give God the praise. Because God, I don't have to have babies for you. All I got to do is be yours, God. God, I don't, come on. I don't have to flip a trick for you, God. All I got to do is be yours. It's what I'm about to get this. She conceived and bare a son and said, Now will I praise God. Therefore, she called his name Judah and slept off bearing. In other words, she, called, she went into a place of praise and stopped birthing things based on a man. And I'm hoping I don't make three brothers mad, but amen. <laughs> After a while, you better get to a place until what you are doing in life is not trying based upon pleasing a man or a woman. I have something called wisdom creeds, pastor, and one of them goes like this. Never expect from man what only you can get from God. Coming from child number 12, the number of the apostolic. Didn't feel very apostolic when I was a kid. Two years old. Being sent to Maryland because my mom could not take care of all of us. And at two years old, I landed smack dab under a man of God. My uncle, who taught me strength, who taught me manhood. I didn't even yet understand the depth of what he was putting in me. That change made me who I am today. Are oh, you understanding me? God... It's looking out for our generations. God is looking out for you. But we got to stop trying to get from man what only we can get from God. I want you to go, and this ain't on the screen. I want you to take your Bibles. I want to take you somewhere. Y'all want to go? God, I thank you. How many, how many enjoy this? I want you to go to the book of St. John, chapter 2. Now we're going to start it at St. John, chapter 1. Bear with me, I'm pulling it up on my phone. 
Got this? When you get chapter 1, verse 11. St. John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Are you ready? How many want to learn something from Jesus? Here he goes. Ready? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now in its context, it is talking about salvation. It is ta- in its context, it is talking about coming to Christ and how that some of his Jewish people did not receive him as a Messiah. In a wisdom key? You want a wisdom key? Yes, sir. Yes. Sometimes you will come to your own and it doesn't receive you. Right. Stop giving power right. to those that don't receive you. Right. Now what do I mean by giving them power? Stop expecting one nod of their head to make your life this or that. Because at some point, to be whole spiritually, you have to look at things and call it is what it is. I tried. I tried to pursue you, but you wouldn't be pursued. I tried to fit in, but you wouldn't let me in. I had tried to be a part Cried for a long time. Ran down behind you. I'm not a child anymore. I'm not a baby anymore. As many as receive me, that's who I'm giving power to. Stop giving power to a situation. You know how you're going to get free? You're not going to get free today by them changing. You're going to get free by you changing. Now, Brother Hopkins, are you saying that I'm wrong for, for wanting that relationship? For this? No, I'm saying move on. Life ain't ideal. Sometimes you have to learn how to adapt. When my father and my mother forsook me, the Lord raised me up. Let's give God a great big hand praise. God, we thank you. Isn't he marvelous? All of that was right there in scripture. Now here goes some of the manifestations that you will find. Next frame, please. Here is some. You you can flow, man of God, because I'm getting ready to come so we can break. Now here are some of the manifestations that you will encounter that that these strongholds feed on. One, many of them feed on what we call the spirit of rejection from the wound. The spirit of rejection from the womb when I've had to do battle with that thing, it makes a person feel that they were never wanted and don't understand why. And it's usually connected to being at the time of your conception. Your mother or father being under so much pressure until the signals that are sent to your body through their emotions and especially through mother's emotion is fear or not knowing whether to have you or not that's one way that I have prayed for people they may change their mind but it's something about our little bodies it's the the computer of the mind somehow even as a baby in the stomach it can take emotions and begin to latch on to them now this is not always the case then I've encountered the spirit of rejection from the womb. The child becomes born, but when the child is born, they're not accepted as one of the family. One caretaker that worked in the hospital, that worked in the maternity ward, said that she noticed that when the babies were rejected and unwanted, they would just cry and cry and cry because they could feel it. God damn. I've sat with adults and prayed with them and I've said to them through the word of knowledge, I said, you know how sometimes you sit on the edge of your bed and there is a 
emptiness in you, a lost, who am I? Where do I belong? Now this is not always the case, but I have ministered healing to the damaged emotion, inner healing by the power of the Holy Spirit, not new age foolishness. And I've seen God heal that rejection from the wound that set that pattern. Are you hearing me? I've also seen the spirit operate, a rejection from mother or father, rejection from husband, wife, or children, or in-laws and family. And that's another powerful one. Being rejected by the in-laws. Their, their soul, it was just like uh, Ishmael's wives, no matter what children they had, God helped little Ishmaelites. I mean, God helped little Esauites. Because whatever children he had, Rebecca and Isaac looked at those children out of the eyes that they felt about his mother. Their mother was a grief of mine. And she said, look at them now that I had two little griefs. Are you understanding me? Now some of us have seen and felt this type of thing. I've, I've seen a generational curse continue on in a family line. And the, and, the, and the kids be involved in it and don't even know why. The spirit of rejection also can open the door to what we call self-rejection. If, if y'all don't love me, if my grandpa, and my mom, and my dad don't love me, then maybe it's something wrong with me, not worth being loved. Do you understand this? You know this verse that we hear, for God so loved. What that word, so Love is powerful. That's just about undefinable. The love that we need, we were built by God to be loved, accepted, and forgiven. It's this self hatred or hatred of self spirit and what have you begins to manifest from being rejected. Also, I've ministered to one young lady that she had a spirit called ugly. What happened with her, and it was in some of this stuff, these strongholds doesn't even make sense. But her sister was doing beauty pageants. And as a small kid, she asks her father, I want to do one too. And he said, I don't know what you want, would think you want anybody want to put money in, in you for that. You're skinny and you're ugly. And what was crazy? What was crazy, Cherise? The girl was fine looking. She was a nice, beautiful young lady. And I had to cast the spirit of ugliness at Now I bet you man folk were looking at me like I had lost my mind. And that thing said, she's so, and when that voice came up in a male voice, she's so ugly. I told her all the time, she's ugly. And when she would see herself in the mirror, she could see no beauty. Because the one who should have been building and protecting her took away that validation. I have a granddaughter named Tasha in the last two years and, and she don't mind me sharing this because it's not very much of her business. She deserves that, right? The last two years of her in high school she had moved from Germany and stayed two years. Her and her mom spent two years with me and for two years when I would be home and coming from conferences, we would have what we call Opie moments. Now, Opie is grandpa in Germany. And I would take Tasha. And she never knew really what I was doing. She knows now, because she's a grown young lady. But I would take Tasha and I would just start talking to her and building her and speaking into her life. An area where her and her father was not connected and not hooked up. I was speaking to her life, not trying to take my son's place, but trying to build that gap that I saw that the enemy was doing to my generation. Sometimes we as grandparents, even if you, I don't know why you even put what I, you know how her mom is, that got nothing to do with your grandchild. 
I'm talking about being saved. Sometimes we have to be wise enough to understand y'all are arguing about y'all's moment. I'm dealing with the future of our generation. And I was speaking to her life and ministered to her. And it was the most awesome two years. Later they moved, they still lived near me and they got their own place. And every now and then, even a teenager that's in college and everything, she'll call and say, Opie, we gotta go have a moment. And when she's going through a bad relationship, she can talk to Opie about it. When she needs to understand that that young man you with, he ain't all for you, girlfriend. She can talk to Opie about it. Do you understand? They need us. They need our prayers. They need our presence. They need our forgiveness. Sometimes they need our patience. That spirit of self-hatred. Curse of rejection in marriage and the family line. And go to the next frame. Spirit of rejection because you were disowned by mother and father. Curse of the black sheep in the family. Hurt, pain, and sorrow of rejection. Hatred of men, spirits, or women, spirits, because of past rejection. Building that. Jezebel, spirits, because of past experiences. Spirits that oh, I can't do anything right. Strongholds that are built on the mind. Now, when I say spirits, do understand, I'm talking about something that has attached itself to an emotional wound. Deliverance almost sounds like you can't stick the spirit. Well, everything's going to change. No, the spirit is only naming itself under something that it can take advantage of. Spirits are bound and block success. Often a rejected person feels like they can't succeed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I know that as we spoke here that your Holy Spirit said some powerful things to all of us in the mighty name of Jesus I pray on this YouTube video on this message Father in the name of Jesus I command just sit there and let the Holy Spirit do what he's doing in the name of Jesus I command the spirit of rejection from the womb I command you to come out and let them go. Come on. In the name of Jesus, I was never wanted. And I come against being one that feel like I should have died before I was ever born. Go. Come on. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on out of that now. Come on. I command you to come out of that now. I command rejection from the wound. Amen. Feeling like you were not wanted. You were a mistake. Go. Come out of that now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep it just like you got it, man. Come on, all the way, all the way, all the way. Mama never wanted me. Daddy never wanted me. Go! Come out! That's right, all through the room. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let the Holy Spirit do it. Come on, I call you out right now. I command in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, feeling that I wish I were dead. Go! Why didn't I die from the wound? Come out! In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, I command spirits of rejection from mother, spirits of rejection from father. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. I call you out. I call right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirits right now in Jesus' name where they will not tell you who you are. I don't know where I belong. I don't know who I am. Come out in the name of Jesus. I break your power. You will not dominate us. You will not control us. Go, go, go now. Come on, all the way. In the name of Jesus. Come on. In the name of Jesus, I command in the name of Jesus, rejection from your relatives, that side of the family that will not deal with you, will not receive you, will not accept you. I command it to go. Come out now in the name of Jesus. I break you and I call. Come on, go, go, go. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I break that shame. In the name of Jesus, I must be ashamed. I said, why are they hiding me? Why don't they accept me? Go, come on, come on. 
I even break the stronghold of watching daddy treat the other children as if they are children but me not even recognizing me I call you out go 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 I break you and call you out by the power of the blood come on all the way all the way here come on come on come on come on watching like Esau did watching like yeah, like 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 watching right now like Ishmael did the other children you were there but you weren't accepted you were not acknowledged but yet there were other children go what did I do wrong what happened with me in the name of Jesus I call it out I call the control of those manifestations come on go go in the name of Jesus, I command the pain that it causes you. I command the heartache that it causes you. Loose now. I command in Jesus' name the anger. The anger at not being acknowledged. I call it out. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I command spirits of self-rejection and self-hatred. I call you out in the name of Jesus. Go. Spirits of self-rejection and self-hatred. I command that you go, go, go. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break it. Rush to the Come on, come on, Allah. Come on, Allah. Come on, Allah. Loose it off of me and off my family line. Lord God, shut this thing down in my generation. Shut this thing down in our family line. Go! In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Rejection from childhood, go. Not accepted in school, in college, and around others, go. Feeling left out and pushed aside, go. In the name of Jesus, come on. By the power of the blood. God healed every damage, healed every wound. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of that now. Go. Go. I command the guilt you feel because when my younger days I was pregnant at a young age or I had children at a young age and God, they, they, they were not able to hook up with their fathers, hook up with their parents. I command abandonment. Go. Spirits of abandonment, go. Come on. Come on. Spirits of abandonment, go. And blaming yourself and not forgiving yourself because of how you watched your children grow up. In the name of Jesus, you might have been a single mother, but my God, you was a mother. You were there. God healed that. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. I command rejection from the wound, the inability to get along with your own mother. Come out. The inability to get along with your own mother. Come out. Come out because when you were born, you changed her life. She could have went to college. She could have done something. But you were born. Go. Go. I command spirits of sibling rivalry. In the family, come out. Come on. Come on. I command in the name of Jesus that no matter how successful I am, no matter what I do, that I can still feel empty on the inside. Come out. Come out. And in the most of the in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Come on. Spread some rejection because you're disowned. Go. 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 Come on. Come on. You're disowned. I don't feel like I belong anywhere. I don't feel like I fit in anywhere. Come on. 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 By the power of the blood, I break you. And I break the curse of the black sheep. I command it to go in Jesus' name. Come on, come on out of there. Come out of there. I even command grandmama not receiving it. Grandpapa not receiving it. Come out. That side of the family not receiving it. I even command curses on your marriage because they never could accept your mate, couldn't accept your wife, couldn't accept your husband. Go. 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 I break you demons down and I command the areas of the damaged emotion to be healed by the power of the risen Savior. In the children, I pray for the children. Where is my daddy? Where is my daddy? I want my daddy. Why doesn't he take time for me? Go, come on out. Come on out. 
I command the guilt and the condemnation that mothers feel when fathers aren't there. I command the condemnation and guilt that fathers feel that, that fathers go through when mothers will not allow them to see their own children. I call you out. I command you to go. Come on. Mama, why did you keep why did you keep me away from daddy? Why did you keep daddy away from me? Come on. Loose. Come out. This cycle repeating in my family line. I commanded to go. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, baby girl. Right here. I command in the name of Jesus. Those three, come on, loose. Come on, loose. Come on. Come on out of that. What is wrong with me? Why don't they come by to see me? Why don't they take time with me? Is there something wrong with me? Go! Go! In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I can't do anything right. Is there something wrong with me? Go! Leave! By the power of the blood. Come on, come on, come on, everybody. Weeping and crying. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God turns the hearts of the children back to the fathers and the hearts of the father to the children. Loose! And in the name of Come on, come on, come on, come on. By the power of the risen Savior, I break you. I command you to go. I command you to go. In the name of Jesus, come on. In the name of Jesus, come on, come on, come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, drive them out. Drive them out, drive them out, drive them out, drive them out. Father, heal me. Heal my generation. In the name of Jesus. Heal me from the wounds of abandonment. Heal me from the wounds of rejection. Heal my children. Heal my generation. Lord, I'm a parent. Lift this guilt off of me. Yes, I've made mistakes. Yes, I've had failures. God, loose me. Loose me from the guilt. Loose me from the shame. Loose me. Go. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let your anointing heal God. Arrested development, go. Blocked identity, go. Never feeling like I'm worth anything, go. Attacks on, on your life, your ministry, your work, your abilities, go. Come out. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out. By the power of the Moshanda. Shedder of the And I give you praise. Come on out. Come on out. That's right. That's right. Listen to that. You demons go now. In the name of Jesus. Father, heal me. Heal me from sexual attacks. Heal me from perversion. Heal me from lust. Heal me from madness. Come on out. Go. Go. Rejection driving me to doing things and making decisions because I wanted love. I wanted acceptance. I wanted forgiveness. Now guilt leave them now. Condemnation leave them now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God on this tape I pray. Just as this room many are being delivered right now. I pray for the healing. I pray for the breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Go in there, Father God, and heal the damaged emotion. Heal every wound. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I give you praise. And I give you glory. And I honor you, oh God. In Jesus' name. Glory. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. And Father, we praise you for healing every area, God. In the name of Jesus. For there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. To break every chain. Oh God. As much as demons have came out of many people, let the Holy Spirit's healing 
go in there and heal every emotional soul tie with the aspiration of approval. Heal my soul from seeking approval from my rejectors. Heal my soul that empty place that's been there ever since I was a child. Heal it in me, God. For your Holy Spirit, one of its names is Comforter. I ask your Holy Spirit, Father, to heal the brokenness from family. Many of them didn't even know what they were doing. Many of them had no idea what it was setting up in our family line. I pray now, not only for my healing, but the healing of our generation and generations to come, that this wicked cycle that attacks in every fiber of who we are, that it be broken in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give God a big